Your Honour, my name is Tim Malone and I represent the accused, Mr Johnny Wishbone, by video conferencing in these matters. I believe the court has been previously provided a copy of my application and I respectfully submit to the court to seek to have the evidence upon which the 106 charges laid against my client be excluded on the grounds of non-compliance with sections um, of the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act. I respectfully seek from the court a direction or ruling under section 590 of the Criminal Code to exclude this evidence um, in accordance with section 130 of the Evidence Act. Your Honour, my client is a Torres Strait Islander juvenile of 16 years. Accordingly, he has afforded certain rights and protections under the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act, and it's the breach of those rights which forms the basis for my application today. To assist the court with some of the factual background um, uh, in support of my application, on the night of the 23rd of June 2016, in the first instance, the arresting officers interviewed my client. However, there was no contemporaneous notes or recording made. This was in a court. This was in breach um, of Section 437 of the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act. I'd like to note that the only admission made at this time was that certain property found in his backpack was not my client's. Uh, my client was subsequently arrested, placed in an unmarked police car, driven around by the two arresting officers, where they proceeded to ask him whether or not he had broken into certain houses that had been burgled in the um, in recent history. It's important to note that in the lead up to, uh, to being arrested and also in the intervening period, no contact had been made by the arresting officers to my client's parents or other guardians. Excuse me. My client was then taken to the local precinct, during which a person claiming to be the support person advised him to attempt to answer all of the police officer's questions and advised him to tell the truth at all times. During the subsequent interview, it was argued by the complainant that, he, that my client made admissions in respect of 106 charges now laid against him. Like before the commencement of this interview, Johnny was not offered the choice of support person nor was his parents or other guardians appropriately, appropriately advised of what was occurring. I respectfully argue to the court that my client falls within the definition of special witnesses under section 21 of the Evidence Act, as he was reasonably likely to be intimidated by the arresting officers as to be disadvantaged as a witness. This should, should have um, informed the approach taken by the arresting officers to be particularly careful and uh, compliant various responsibilities under the PPRA. Your Honour, this sequence of events demonstrates repeated non-compliance with the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act. Per sections 418 and also under the Associated Regulations Schedule 9, Section 23, my client maintained at all times the right to communicate with a friend, relative or lawyer before being uh, uh, questioned on an indictable offence. <coughs> Excuse me, Your There's nothing in these circumstances that would justify the interview to continue um, without a reasonable time to delay in waiting for these actions to occur. Further, um, there's no indication that the arresting officers caution my client about his right to silence, and so I'd submit there's also been a breach of sections uh, of the regulations, Schedule 9, Section 26. In respect to my client's Indigenous background as a Torres Strait Islander, the process followed by the arresting officers has breached Section 420 of the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act and also Section 25 of the regulations. These regulations require the officers to notify legal aid uh, that my client was in custody during the events. This requirement was particularly important given uh, not just his cultural background but also his youth at the time of the alleged events. This section also requires the arresting officers to have spoken to an appropriate support person. In this case, this could have been an independent person who is a legal practitioner or representative of the Queensland Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Legal Service. There's no information listed in the police, um, uh, sorry, in the officer's notebook to suggest this occurred, uh, nor did my client waive any of these rights. Your Honour, 
I respectfully submit that the court should use its inherent discretion to exclude evidence of these interviews on the basis of multiple breaches of my client's statutory rights as previously outlined. I'd like to bring to the uh, court's attention uh, one of the defined purposes of the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act, and that is to ensure fairness to and to protect the rights of persons against whom office police officers exercise powers under this Act. I contend that the court, if the court agrees that the sections of the uh, Police Powers and Responsibilities Act and regulations have been breached, then the court should uh, seek to use its discretion in accordance with the principles of Bunnings and Cross and the Crown and Ireland to exclude evidence of these interviews. I respectfully submit that the uh, consideration of all the factors by the court in these circumstances, so that's namely the conduct of the arresting officers, the absence of other corroborating evidence uh, implicating my client outside of the interviews, the relatively minor and non-urgent major nature of the offences um, allegedly committed, the gravity of the collective charges um, being 106 against my client, as well as the fundamental purpose of the act itself means that the court should exercise its discretion in the interest of public fairness as your honourable.